analyze this scientific discotheque uh, with uh, describing a project that I'm preparing now. To some extent, it's related to uh, Sasha, so that, uh, Sasha does. So actually, experience sampling uh, can be understood as uh, a way of collecting data related to emotional uh, states of uh, people. Uh, it can be related to day-to-day uh, -day experience of the mental states, uh, perceptions, or beliefs, for example. Uh, it's actually a diary study uh, under which people they uh, provide their responses regarding their experience uh, uh, related also to work because the application of this project uh, is related to study work actually. Uh, so it's a, it's a specific structure so we can uh, use different methods, different devices uh, to collect all the data uh, related to uh, emotions or perceptions. There are specific benefits of this kind of methodologies uh, I'd like to emphasize. First of all, we study humans in uh, real uh, life uh, settings. So we study uh, how they behave, what they do, what they say, how they feel uh, in the real world. And also, we can observe in real time. So we do not focus on a static measurement, like for example we would do with, uh, with a questionnaire. We focus on what actually people do at a specific moment. Then we try to combine this data and correlate that with uh, other variables, let's say performance or productivity. Uh, but also benefits from this uh, kind of project is that we focus on individual, so we observe uh, not a group of people, but we have more insight into what actually individuals uh, experience and to what extent that's related to, uh, in, uh, to their performance. It does, uh, and this has a really particular meaning for interventions because if we know more about specific individuals, then, for example, we can better address uh, or address better interventions in the workplace. Since we understand individual experience better, then we can fit our interventions also better. I think that also, to some extent, corresponds with this concept that yeah, we need to change how we work, and that also it makes sense to have different methodologies that capture actually. Uh, this experience uh, from not only from day to day but also at the lower level from uh, let's say hour to hour. Uh, in this kind of uh, methodologies, this is what Sasha showed you before, but this is more simplistic. Uh, for example, what for this kind of studies we can use a smartphone and uh, from time to time randomly we can uh, ask participants, uh, employees actually, uh, to provide uh, to provide simple information about the mental state. Uh, so we can beep them and ask them for uh, providing data and we can accumulate this data not only within a day but also we can accumulate the data from day to day. Uh, this uh, uh, design can be more uh, uh, complex. As you see, we can use multiple devices, not only those cameras that can be worked on, on body but also we can use body sensors to, for example, measure uh, uh, blood pressure and other aspects related to stress. Uh, one of the uh, really interesting studies, actually it's uh, pretty novel, and there's not uh, much done on the relationship between, for example, stress, depression, and, and performance, is a study by Baumeister, they use really large sample, and they've showed that um, this uh, depression uh, level can vary across uh, participants. So they were trying to find what determines, potentially what determines this kind of uh, uh, variability. They also found that our level of depletion that can be related, uh, related to work can vary across different uh, um, hours. So here you see um, a graph that shows depletion level uh, in the individuals and you see that it changes across the day. So actually during the work day, uh, employees can be quite depleted. That increases also at the end of the day. So then people can uh, rest. Also they observed they also observed depletion that could be uh, related to uh, how well we sleep. So this study also emphasized the fact that to, uh, for example, function better in the workplace, it's also important to understand how people recover. And this kind of uh, designs give us insight, potential, potential consequences of how well we sleep uh, during the night. And then they were trying to link those experiences uh, they've collected to different uh, aspects of social function. So here, for example, you can see how those experiences of sleep can be related to the conflict. So this graph shows that, for example, if you didn't sleep well, uh, and then you had different uh, uh, conflicts with your colleagues, for example, then your level of depletion increases. 
and that can be really detrimental for work performance. Uh, and uh, that's the last slide uh, in my project, uh, together with my colleague from, uh, uh, from France and also from Poland, we try to investigate what's the link between, uh, uh, between this kind of data experience of fatigue uh, to work experience and also to what extent determines uh, work performance and what, for example, psychologists can do, how they can change that, how they can uh, create those different skills that can buffer against those kind of negative effects of work fatigue. Okay, that's it. One question, and then we move the back. Yes, Mark? Um, you are asking about the commitment uh, from, the, uh, from the employee. Uh, if you are in this diary study, maybe for two weeks, uh, you will have to fill out. Yeah, uh, so actually. Question every day. Is there a lot of attrition in these kinds of studies? So actually, uh, the design requests that um, you shouldn't ask about too many things but you have to ask systematically. So, for example, uh, you, you have to run a study that focuses on one specific topic. So, you have to like commitment versus fatigue, and that's it. So, you have to limit your uh, uh, research questions uh, for specific studies.